So this video is to show the process for taking a sample to test for COVID-19. Um, so we're going to run through uh, taking a sample which is a combined nose and throat swab. But I just want to point out that if the patient is producing sputum, that's also a good sample for COVID-19. And we'd encourage you to send a sputum sample as well as the nose and throat swab. So first of all, I'm going to show all the different um, things that we need to, in order to take our sample. Um, now, most of these things we will have outside the patient's room and we will um, do all our preparation for, for taking the sample outside the patient's room. So things we need, we need a, a request form. This is from the Regional Virus Laboratory in Belfast. You need to fill that out completely. We use two dry swabs, one for the nose and one for the throat. Um, and then we have a, a white top universal container that these swabs are going to be broken into. Now please remember before you go into the patient's room to fill out all the details on the request form and on the uh, universal container. So that's all done. Um, other things you're going to need um, outside the room are the, um, the bags that the sample actually goes into. So we got three different bags and we'll show you how to do that later. Um, and then of course the other thing that you need before you go in to see the patient is your personal protective equipment or PPE. So for taking a sample we use a, a fluid shield mask with eye protection such as a visor here, disposable gloves and disposable apron. So I'm just going to um, put on my PPE and then we'll go through the process of taking a nose and throat swab from a patient. So I've just put my PPE on outside the room. And I'm ready to go into the room now with the, uh, the materials that I need, the, the, the swabs and the sample bottle. Um, I'm going to take the throat swab first. Now, um, it is a throat swab that we're after. Um, and we're trying to go to the very back of the throat, around the tonsils. Um, and that's how we're going to get a good sample. Could you open your mouth, please? And you might need just to position your patient in as comfortable a way as you can. I'm going to go right back and get that sample right from the back of the throat. You can go on both sides of the tonsils to get a good sample. So having taken my throat swab, I'm going to go and now break it, break the swab off inside the sample bottle. Uh, some of these swabs, you might need to use a, a pair of sterile scissors just to clip it off. Many of them have little breaks on, so it's easy to break them into the um, universal container there. So next I'm going to take the nose swab. Now, with the nose swab, if you're familiar with passing a nasogastric tube, this is exactly the same uh, direction and placement of the swab. We're going to place it into the, into the nose, aiming back towards the um, lower uh, lobe of the ear, running parallel to the um, the roof of the mouth. And that may well be uncomfortable for the patient, but we are trying to get right back there um, to the back of the nose. So again, we just bring our swab over, break it into the sample bottle. Goes like that. And I just pop the lid on. And now I'm going to pass the sample out the door um, uh, to my colleague who's going to do the next thing to prepare this sample so that it's safe to be transported to the laboratory. So outside the room and we're just going to um, safely package up our sample to be tra uh, transported to the laboratory. So um, we've got a, a, a wipe here which is soaked in Actachlor. Um, um, Actachlor Plus, and we're going to use that to uh, decontaminate the outside of the uh, of the universal container. You can use alcohol wipes as well, but just be careful with the alcohol wipes that you don't degrade the uh, the, the 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 patient label on the specimen container. So we we'll just grab the top of this here, give it a nice wipe down, um, and then I'm going to drop this into the first. Um, as, as a specimen transport bag there. I'll just get rid of my Actachlor wipe. I seal that up and then this first bag is going to be put into the second 
uh, specimen bag and you see on the, spe on the second specimen bag at the back there I have got my pre-filled uh, pre-completed uh, uh, request form, laboratory request form, very important to have all the details on that laboratory request form. So then this goes into our final outer bag um, and that can be sealed up and that then is entirely safe for the portering staff to transport to the laboratory for testing. So if you're sending a sample from a community facility such as a care home then you have to ensure the sample is transported in a robust container that meets the UN3373 standard. And that standard should be clearly marked by the manufacturer on the container. 